Hi everyone, Kyra here, author of The Sophia Code. So happy to be here with you today. Uh, this evening, I, or now it's gonna be the evening before, I participated in a platform uh, in service to our Northern California community and also extended worldwide community. And as many of you know, a big part of my public ministry actually began in Northern California. And I lived in California for many, many years. And so whenever these fires begin to start again, I, I feel it very deeply within every cell of my body because there are so many people that, um, that I love and care about that live in California. And, um, so many people that have been a part of birthing the Sophia Code movement. Uh, it, so much of it started because of uh, my time there and my service there. And so, as many of you know, I do not believe that these fires are natural in any way. Um, I'm not going to go in extensively to that. Please feel free to practice the Holy Spirit of discernment that exists within you as your higher self and do some research about where these fires could possibly be um, starting from and why. Um, if you dig deep enough, the answers will shock you and astound you as to what's really happening in this world. And um, that's not the point of my platform at this time to go after uh, and, and speak in detail about the agendas that are setting this world physically on fire. My prayer at this time in serving your heart and serving our worldwide community is to bring us back to the truth of our sovereign divinity because the more we pivot again and again back to the truth of who we are, we reclaim that spiritual warrior within us. We reclaim the invincible divine light within us and we begin our journey of walking away from agendas of enslavement of our species in this planet and into the light and fire and the, the holy fire and the holy truth of our sovereign divinity, which is the solution to everything we have going on here on this planet. Everything that we are wondering, how do we solve that? Well, you can't solve what is completely broken on this planet. You've got to birth it. You've got to birth beyond. You've got to birth the solutions from the beyond. We call that in the Sophia Code, downloading heavenly solutions from what we call the seventh plane or the Sophia source, Christ light, God, Buddha, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. What I care about is that you understand is that you have a source energy. You have a spirit. You have a soul that is connected to the source of all souls. It's connected to the source of all life. I happen to call that source of all life, Sophia. Um, but you can call her by any name. It's or, and God, the father, What's important is that we step into that space of communion to understand that we are not powerless in the face of these fires and we are not powerless in the face of the flooding. We are not powerless in the face of bioengineered weapons um, such as viral epidemics. We're not powerless in the face of these assaults, these psychological assaults, the mental assaults, the emotional assaults on the heart of humanity. Now, if there's one Ascended Master Mentor that knows about the heart of humanity, it's Mother Mary. And today is her day celebrated by the Catholic Church. I think it's funny that, um, that there's just one day that's designated to celebrate Mary. Because for me, um, Mary was just as much of a Christ figure as Jesus is. And she represents a mirror for us to understand that the Christ also exists and lives within us. And all we have to do is begin the process of going within and tuning into that Christ light within us, which the Sophia Code walks you through every step of the way in section two through these initiations that we offer you. But the reason why I really wanna bring in Mother Mary is because I wanna pray for our family in California. You know, it's like everyone that's fleeing from these fires right now, losing their homes, their properties, their livelihoods, their businesses, um, by some quote unquote wildfire, like those people are your family. Humanity is your family. It doesn't, you don't have to like a lot of the people in humanity. I, I certainly don't, but we do have to love them and we do have to pray for our brothers and sisters worldwide because it's just like, there's just nothing else to do. We're in this 
we're literally quite literally in this matrix together. It's so funny how, you know, with the whole um, <clears throat> programming around what we should or shouldn't be doing at this time with the pandemic, we're in this together. It's just like, yep, we are. We really are. But here's how we break free from that idea of how we're in this together and, and step into a creative a solution oriented uh, creatorhood mindset, a sovereign creatorhood mindset. It's when we understand that through our light, we're in this together. Through our light, we create a solution together. Through the, um, through our, the power of our prayer, through the power of our willingness to serve each other's hearts, um, and to be humble enough to look within our own hearts and find out how we can better love one another and better show up for one another day in and day out. Um, we came here to take care of each other. We came here to take care of the earth. And so, yeah, I just want to, I just wanted to read this quote from mother Mary, because I, I feel, I feel pain, emotional pain body, um, so deeply of humanity and anyone who's suffering. And I can really feel just how much people are suffering this evening from the fires in California and they have been suffering and I have been praying for them, but it's what, being on the platform. It really just this evening, it just tuned me in on a whole nother level of the agony and I can't feel agony and not pray about it. I don't know about you, but that's the first thing. That's the first place that I want to go to. You know, it's just like, you're feeling agony. I want to pray with you about it. You know, it's just like, if I'm feeling the agony, it's like, I'm going to get on my knees and pray about it. That's just how it works here in this world. If, if, to, to, to find the relief of the unconditional love and, and to find the relief of the solutions from the source, both within us and, and the source that exists all around us, it's like, we got to be humble enough to ask for help. So I was hoping we could do that. Um, and I also wanted to just remind everybody of what an incredible incredible best friend Mother Mary is as a mentor and guide. We meet Mother Mary in the Sophia Code in a very new way. Mother Mary in the Sophia Code is not some teenage girl in a manger scene who's helpless. Mother Mary in the Sophia Code is a highly educated, highly trained um, high priestess of Isis Hathor. She's an oracular activist. She has, she's such an advanced mystery school initiate that she has the spiritual technology activated within her to actually give birth to Jesus as an immaculate conception. That part kind of got written out of the Bible. Big surprise there. The point being is that this is an extraordinary woman who lived ex so many lifetimes and, uh, in her service to this planet, in the heart of humanity, she knows the agony that so many of our brothers and sisters are feeling both in California and worldwide um, as they face these agendas of destruction day in and day out. And so um, Mother Mary wants us to know that we can call upon her at any time. So if you're ever concerned about your home or your business uh, with the fire or your family members that may be living in a place where these disasters are happening, Mother Mary is saying, please call upon her for, the, for their protection. Call upon the Holy Mother. Like, see yourself as one with Mother Mary and with, with Sophia or God or whatever you call Mother, Father, God, and feel the light and that, and that overlighting presence being sent to your loved ones, <clears throat> surrounding their property. And if their property is not saved by your prayers, please know that there is a divine plan that is unfolding um, for both their life, for your life, and for this world. And we don't have to like it. We do not have to like it. But I want everyone to know that if there are great losses, that no one is lost in God. No one is lost in the Holy Spirit. You know, when people have to go bury their loved ones in unmarked graves because of COVID, because somebody said they couldn't actually have a funeral for their loved ones, that does not go lost in our consciousness or in God's consciousness. We care. We are God's love in this world. And through our prayers and our hearts, we remember. We remember the sacrifices that are made that are happening right now, right now for consciousness to evolve. And no one knows that better than Mother Mary. She stood at that cross watching her son demonstrate for, for three days what we as a species have been doing to ourselves for centuries. We have literally been 
taught to crucify ourselves for the truth of our sovereign divinity. And this is the time where we have to step in and embody our sovereign divinity so that they can no longer burn down entire states. Oh, let me see, entire countries like Australia. Are we done? If you're done, say yes. Pick up your copy of the Sophia Code and get through all of the initiations in this book. Because this flips on the divine genome within you. This gets the operating system of your higher self and your sovereign divinity operating your body, heart, and mind in an entirely new way. And here's one of the great benefits of what happens when your body, heart, and mind start operating from your sovereign divinity. You are always, and I mean always, in the right place at the right time. And I got to tell you, that's important to me right now because I care about you. I care about every single one of you. Maybe nobody's ever said that to you before in that way, but I really care about you. And I always want you to be in the right place at the right time. I want your children to be at the right place at the right time. I want your grandmothers and your grandfathers and your elders to be at the right place at the right time. I know through the consciousness of Sophia God, I know firsthand about always being at the right place at the right time because I have had my life saved over and over and over and over again by the Holy Spirit of my higher self in communion with God. And everyone has a Holy Spirit and everyone has a higher self and everyone has a direct connection to God. No matter what religion or government tell you, you have a sovereign connection to your source. And that's the connection that Mother Mary is going to mentor you in as you as you learn, as you meet her in the Sophia Code, as you walk with her through her initiation, maybe you walk into our mystery school and you, and you take some of these courses and really drop in with that crucial inner work right now that's so essential for us to wake up very quickly on an accelerated path of empowerment, sovereign creative empowerment, stepping out of the veils and the illusion and the duality of victimhood and stepping fully into that holy fire and light of our embodied Christhood, which is essential right now. Because when you flip on the switches of your divine genome and you're embodying your higher self, it, uh, it literally impacts hundreds, thousands. It can even impact millions of souls simultaneously. This is the level of oppression that we, are, that we are experiencing right now for our great awakening from spiritual infancy into spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is willing to do the inner work whether our states or our countries are set on fire. Spiritual maturity is willing to go within and sit with all of the hard feelings that we may be avoiding instead of doing the inner healing work and showing up to our divine purpose um, you know, that's the kind of inner work that can avert global pandemics. People ask me, why hasn't the golden age happened yet? Are you kidding me? <laughs> we need to move out of binky spirituality where people are running to spirituality to get high, to leave their bodies, um, to try to escape this world, to just be soothed like a baby. And we need to step into a spiritual maturity where you understand that your spiritual journey is, is going to lead you to helping others to be of service, not to escape this world, but to be so fully embodied in this world that your spiritual warriorhood, warriorhood ends up affecting hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of lives in this lifetime. That's spiritual maturity. It's like what JFK said, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And I, I quote that quote on purpose during an election year. Not because I want to talk about politics. I want, to talk about, I want to talk about what we can focus on in our sovereignty during an election year that's got mad hatter, crazy chaos unleashed all over our country and all over this world. And it's just like, it's just not acceptable. You know, it's like, we're smarter than this. We're smarter than energy directed weapons burning down the state of California. Like, we're just smarter than that. We're bigger than that. Just, to, just your friendly Mr. Rogers neighborhood reminder, we're bigger than people. Oh, let's see, Paradise Valley in California, thousands of people disintegrated to dust, can't even find the bones because the fires there, the wildfires that were so rampant, and then all of the different systems that came in to clean it all up, sweep it under the rug. Oh, a couple thousand people disappeared, nothing to see here.
this is it, people. This is why the Sophia Code came here. It's why Mother Mary, a couple of years ago, came to me. And she's like, you better get people ready because there are times coming that are going to blow your mind. Get them ready. Get them, get them activated in their sovereignty. That's going to be their sanity. At the time when she came to me, I thought to myself, oh, my God, Mother Mary, how... I, I can't, I can't say it like that. Like that's, that's just really intense. Like people won't understand. She said, it doesn't matter if they're going to understand or not. You are responsible for sounding the alarm, letting people know this work is everything right now. Embodying our sovereignty, the, the path of awakening the divine genome within you sets into motion a, the ability for your crystalline Christhood light to literally anchor within every cell of your DNA and begin to operate your awareness, your ego structure, your unconsciously held wounding, and yes, your physical body in entirely new ways. And does it happen overnight? No, it doesn't. That's why my team and I work so hard day in and day out to create the mystery school that we have. That's why I've been offering the Heaven on Earth Prayer Collective as a free ministry for six years. It's why I created the Sophia Code Foundation. It's because I know this is a journey. It's not a destination. This is a lifetime of ascension studies, one of the most pivotal centuries uh, that we've faced in a very long time. So that's what I really wanted to share in unison with Mother Mary tonight about the urgency of these times, that we need to wake up and get our heads out of the sand, not to stare at the black whole of these luciferian agendas to freak ourselves out but to call ourselves out that our spirituality isn't isn't a binky or it's not it's not about expecting a spiritual teacher to change your emotional diapers our spiritual journey in this lifetime is about learning how to become the masters where we ask okay i i feel scared and vulnerable and i i have i struggled with my self-esteem but how do i show up anyways well, I'm shy and introverted, so I can't really be seen in my divine purpose as a resource of support for others. I am shy and introverted. Look at me. <laughs> my mentors are always pushing me out on the stage. Get out there and keep talking beyond my comfort zone. I'm doing it because I know there's lives on the line. I know there's people at home that want to kill themselves. They're depressed. There's children on the line. <laughs> There's millions of children being trafficked every day, let alone all the fires they're setting and lives they're destroying in towns and businesses that they're trying to upend. It's just like, I get it. You're afraid. <sighs> Who is it? Let's get over it. And let's get into it. Mother Mary did. Can you imagine what she, the, the depth of courage she had to be in to stand next to her executed son surrounded by Roman soldiers that could have struck her down at any moment? Or the thousands of Roman people and, 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 and the different Jewish rulers that, that hated her as well? It's just like, she could have been struck down, still she showed up and she stood by her son's public demonstration of the truth. By the way, Jesus did not get marched to that cross unwillingly. As I shared in the Sedona conference, he went willingly. No one could have nailed him to that cross unless he said yes. So if y'all think they're stepping up in your divine power and purpose in this lifetime, being seen as a resource of support is going get to you, get you ended up on a cross. It only, you'll only end up there unless you want to be there. Unless you want to manifest that reality for yourself. I'm too busy helping people to manifest that reality for myself. How about you? <laughs> They already tried to do that to me. I'm still here. So, you know, it's like, what's it going to take for us to get over our fear and get into our inner journey of spiritual maturity, of embodying our sovereign divinity? I invite you to mentor with Mother Mary in the Sophia Code. I, I invite you to our mystery school to find out just how powerful you really are. I'd like to read this quote. For those um, in honor of those who are suffering in this moment, those in honor of those who are surviving these fires, who uh, may be hungry and feel confused or in shock um, or, or just completely, and I don't even need to go into it. I'm going to read from page 171 of the Sophia Code. This is Mother Mary speaking, and she said, 
and chapter nine of the Sophia Code, I highly value the human experience as an important vehicle for ascension. And how I interact with my initiates reflects this passion. I often move beyond the laws of form to reach those who I work with by frequently appearing in dreams, visions, and through physical signs to those mentoring with me. I revel in the everyday details of your life that are all contributing to your journey of ascension. You can call on me for help with anything at all for every moment of your life is precious to me. Mother Mary is very much with everyone who is surviving these fires right now. And she's very much with all every, everyone on this planet that's surviving some aspect of, of this global war of annihilation that we all face. And I'd love for us to turn in prayer and meditation with Mother Mary to bring a blessing into this world. For when Jesus taught us, when two or more are gathered, there is the I am presence that is the consciousness of birth miracles in this world. And speaking of the consciousness of miracles, I want to call on that angelic order, the order of virtues, uh, to be present at this time, the order of the sacred flames, the order of thrones, the order of seraphim, the order of Ophanin. And I'm going to call in the, the fullness of the Sophia dragon tribe, countless ascended masters who are exceptional uh, teachers of sovereignty. And there are eight revealed key codes in the section two of the Sophia code that initiate your divine genome. And I'm going to invite them to create a circle of light and empowerment around you as we make these prayers with Mother Mary for our family in California and around the world calling in beautiful white buffalo woman in the north. Behind her stands the order of sky grandmothers and the Syrian white buffalo star nation. In the northeast, I'm welcoming a master Isis and Saint Germain of the Violet Flame. In the east, I welcome Hathor, Sekhmet, and the Hathor star nation. In the southeast, I welcome Green Tara, she of a thousand stars and the entire order of Dakinis. In the South, I welcome Mother Mary. This is her day that we honor and celebrate in the Catholic tradition. I'm not Catholic, just saying. I love, I love days to celebrate the sainthood, the saintly, godly acts of those holy people that have identified and remembered their holiness and put it to good use in this world, rolled up their sleeves and done something amazing that we still talk about. Uh, so, so that I, I truly appreciate the feast days and the honoring of the saints, um, minus the crazy dogma and weird abuses of the church, welcoming Mother Mary. Truly, she is a queen of heaven and earth, a queen of heaven and earth. She of a thousand roses, welcoming her in the south. God, I've never met a soul that cares more about the children of this world. Welcoming Mother Mary in the South. I also welcome her protege, Mary Magdalene, her son Jesus, and the entire Order of Magdalena, including St. Joan of Arc. In the West, I welcome beloved, powerful Kuan Yin and Maha Avatar Babaji. <clears throat> and in the Northwest, I welcome the Holy Seraphim, Divine Feminine Christ teachers, the Sophia dragons of the Sophia Code cosmology. Within the center of this circle, I invoke your higher self, your Holy Spirit, your Buddhic Christ light to fill that circle of light surrounding your human body. And I welcome your crown chakra, which is located at the top of your head to start spiraling opening, open as a doorway of light so that you can feel waves after waves of a waterfall of your own precious Holy Spirit flooding you with the truth and the, the awareness of your sovereign divinity, the light of your sovereign divinity. This is an atomic light. It's an invincible light that you can feel flowing through you at any time you turn your attention back to it. It is a Christed light. It is divinity in human form. That is the definition of Christ. Divinity in human form. Therefore, we are all the one body of Christ. See, it's just a little bit of a perspective shift when you look at a lot of teachings in the Bible. It's not about throwing the whole thing out. It's about understanding like what was really being said in the, in the, from, directly from these masters versus how the church twisted and manipulated so many holy teachings about who you are in the eyes of God as a daughter, son, a child of the Most High. 
at this time, I, I welcome that clear, beautiful, pristine presence of your higher self flooding your human awareness. And we welcome for that, that presence of Holy Mother, Holy Father, God to fall fresh upon you. Whatever you call God, it, it exists everywhere. It exists within you and exists beyond this world, so far beyond this world. We are but a, a speck in the, the multiverse. We travel all the way back to that one source light from which all of creation arise. I call that source light and that black womb of no thing, the divine mother creatrix of all life, Sophia, source, Sophia. And I invite your awareness to speak this prayer with me three times because this prayer is going to shift your consciousness into such a deep state of knowing of your direct communion with God. Uh, if from that space, we're going to be able to really send the energy, the healing energy and prayers that are really needed to California this evening. And this prayer is located on page three of the Sophia Code, and it goes a little something like this. Divine Mother of all life, take me to that place deep within your womb where I can know nothing and be reborn anew. Divine Mother of all life, take me to that place deep within your womb where I can know nothing and be reborn anew. Divine Mother of all life, take me to that place deep within your womb where I can know nothing and be reborn anew. You may begin to feel the presence of these beautiful uh, seraphim, iridescent white, pearlescent white flames begin to spiral around you in your consciousness, transmuting any anxieties and fears that you may be feeling about um, the weaponization of weather and the weaponization of the elements of this earth. And it's like, when people tell me, oh, mother nature is taking her revenge. I just want to like, honestly, I get sick to my stomach when I hear people say that because there couldn't be anything further from the truth. Your mother earth loves you unconditionally. She sees you as a part of her body. She volunteered to be a part of your journey of ascension and awakening and she would never do anything to intentionally harm you, just like any wholesome, emotionally sound mother would never hurt her child willingly, not even once. The ways that the earth and the elements are behaving right now are engineered. It's engineered to confuse humanity, to confuse our minds and our hearts, to cause a distrust between your heart and the earth. So the first prayer that is coming through from Mother Mary is reclaiming your direct relationship with the goodness of the earth. That there is a divine feminine Christ consciousness that we call Sophia Gaia in the Sophia Code. And this earth mother has got your back. In fact, her very molecules, the atomic structure of your physical back is made up with her body. How much do you think she actually supports you? She she and you are in a constant communion to hold the very fabric and life force of your body together as a human form. Feeling the presence of Mother Earth, filling your spine, filling the back of your neck and the back of your heart with the reassurance that you can always reconnect with her in any situation, even in emergency situations, you can touch the earth. What did Buddha do when he became enlightened? The first thing he did was touch the earth. He didn't get on a chariot of fire and leave the earth. He took his hand and he touched the earth. So in your mind, and if, if you're outside listening to this or you're in your home, just touch the floor, touch your chair, touch the element of earth, the physicality of earth. And I invite you to remember that it is safe to be in communion with the earth. Couldn't be more safe. All of these disasters are causing us to try to distrust the earth, but the earth loves you. And the more we reconnect with the earth, the more we reestablish a clear, calming presence for her body. There's so much happening to her body right now between the geoengineering and the fracting and the energy directed weapons. It's like 
that's a lot of disruption to her body. Send her your confident love into her body right now. This is what you were designed to do, is to be a steward of the earth, to be a caretaker of the earth, to be a blesser of the earth. I invite your higher self, your Christ light, to begin to download from your crown into your heart and down right through your your solar plexus, your, your sacral chakra and your root chakra and right down your legs and right through your feet chakra. Send your support to the earth. Send your love, send your gratitude. She has given you so much and feel how she immediately, the biofeedback starts to roll up your legs immediately. Like, oh, you're paying attention. Oh, you feel and see me. Oh, thank you. I love being in communion with you. That's what the earth is always saying to you whenever you appreciate her. Appreciate her water, appreciate her soil and her sands and her trees and her plants, her clouds and the, the many winged ones and four legged that are a part of her body as well. She is such a profound intelligence, perfect intelligence. And part, a big part of psychic development, as I shared in our recent Sedona conference, is your relationship with the earth, which is, which is con continually transmitting to you information that your body needs to know about in times like these. When to stand still, when to act, when to shore up, and when to be generous. You, you can know this through your relationship with the earth, your higher self communicating to your human awareness in that communion with the earth. And as you feel this profound connection to the earth, I invite your higher self to lift your angel wings high. If you haven't activated your angel wings as a spiritual technology yet, you can find that activation on my website at kaira.com. Very easy and very affordable to get that activation. So everyone who has activated your angel wings, wings up. Let's all turn to face the state of California today where there are wild, uh, fires burning out of control everywhere. Um, and I would like for you to visualize the energy and the consciousness of water. How soothing water is, how quenching water is, how baptismal water is. And I want you, to, if you could please, I invite you to please visualize that spirit of water being transmitted from your angel wings. Maybe some of you feel like you've got archangel wings. Great, stretch them all the way to California. And watch as, the, as rain starts to fall from your angel wings over the state of California. We ask the heavens to open as well. The order of virtues, all of the thunder beings to join us in this prayer. To bring water where water needs to quench the earth. And there's drought in so many parts of the world right now. And we also pray for those parts of the world that have been praying for water for quite some time. We ask the veils to part and we ask the rains to fall in a way that is uh, helpful, most helpful for everyone's highest and best good. Mother Mary, we call you forth and we go with you. Everyone, please visualize yourself walking with Mother Mary to minister to the hearts and minds of those who have lost their home, who are scarred or burned, who are in shock, who are hungry. We call upon that heart of Mother Mary to now be awakened within your own heart. This is a key code for transmission, spiraling open your heart as the rose. I invite you to feel your heart get wider and wider in tandem with your angel wings, sending the water from your wings, the precious rains, and that beautiful cleansing Holy Spirit breath of life, the holy fire that can put out lower energy fires, the higher consciousness fires that can end the, the energies of darkness that keep feeding these fires. Fire, water, earth, and air, as it was originally designed to serve the divine will. We call upon the spirit of divine will for all to prosper, not just a few from the destruction of worlds, but for humanity, the heart of humanity to prosper now, 
to be reconciled with this sovereign divinity. Visualize your arms being as wide as Mother Mary's and bringing, sending compassion, grace, drying the tears of confusion. Visualize yourself embracing the children who have just lost their homes or have been separated from their families. Please visualize embracing and thanking and sending blessings to all emergency workers, firefighters, nurses, doctors on the front lines. And that includes all medical um, work, uh, frontline medical staff that are serving to help fight the spread of all engineered viruses, as well as natural ones on the front lines right now worldwide and in California. There are so many souls listening to this transmission right now. I also invite you to visualize this, this baptismal light, like a blanket over the state of California, over the leadership of California that continues to allow these kind of atrocities to unfold year after year. God only knows what kind of agreements with backdoor agreements that have been made for this to keep going on. We call all of those agreements and all of those contracts and all of those Luciferian agendas out into the light of the Holy Spirit of God. And we call upon that Holy Spirit to fall fresh over the entire state, over every citizen, and now also worldwide for every human being that wants to be free from being punished for the truth of their sovereign divinity we call in that, that sacred flame of sovereignty and the Sophia dragons to come forth and help break the chains of propaganda, the mind control that is keeping people in a state of slavery, fear, and anxiety, and keeping them from the truth of their invincible Christ light. We ask for a mass clearing to happen over the state of California. I'm also calling divine interventions of grace over Washington and Oregon which have been experiencing an incredibly, incredible onslaught of violence. I'm calling upon Archangel Michael and this entire Sophia Dragon tribe to descend over Chicago as well, Georgia, Atlanta, Washington, D.C. I want this entire country flooded by billions of angels serving God's prayer to prosper all of humanity, to awaken humanity and to awaken this country back to the truth of its sovereign Christ light. It's sovereign divinity. I call forth these same prayers for every single country that's also under attack with these agendas that has been flooded and burned down and trafficked and, and trashed. We call forth that presence, the creative genius of the Holy Mother and the Holy Father that exists within each and every one of us. There is not one human being, no matter how toxified, poisoned, or controlled, or enslaved they might feel to this matrix. I know the truth that we have all been born equal and sovereign in the light of Sophia God. And I speak into that light of Sophia within every individual on this planet. For those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, we ears to hear. We pray for you. We pray for your freedom from learning from this level of darkness, and we pray for our freedom to now learn through loving ourselves, to take ourselves off the cross, to stop crucifying ourselves for who we really are, and to start being willing to see ourselves for who we really are. And we send our love to every single human being that is surviving the impact of this war in very physical and emotional ways this evening and all week long, we call a stop to these fires. We call out and we command it to be so according to a divine will that seeks to heal us and prosper us and, re and reconcile us with the truth of who we really are. This X factor of our free will Holy Mother, Holy Father God, Mother Mary, guide us back to the truth of how powerful we are. Guide us back to a, to a deeper knowing that all things are conspiring for us to awaken to the truth of who we really are. And in that journey 
of our awakening. May the casualties be less. May we quicken our steps to our, to our inner path so that so many outside of us will have to suffer so far less. May these sacrifices of our, of our, of our stability, of our stable, of our stability in this world be lessened and, and may our willingness to step into becoming pillars, foundation or foundation of foundational pillars of our society, of our countries, of our states, of this world. It is up to every single one of us to embody our Christhood, which would create a, such a blinding, invincible light. These dark agendas would literally have to dissolve in that light. There's no place for darkness to hide when we activate this much light within us. When we reconcile with this much light within us and we become sober enough, clear enough, dedicated enough, empowered enough to live in that light without excuses anymore in gratitude with the constant question how can i serve how can i show up what can i do today to bring a greater brightness a greater lightness a greater faith back into this world to restore the order that cannot be shaken when two or more are gathered and commanding this level of miracles in our name and so it is amen Thank you for commanding these miracles alongside me, beautiful community, family of light, brothers and sisters worldwide. We are human beings. We are divine beings having a very human beingness experience. Almost everything we've been taught from the moment we came out of the womb was programmed propaganda. When we return to the divine mother's womb of all life, we are rebirthed in the understanding that her consciousness exists within us and her consciousness is unlimited creative genius. Her consciousness has the power to heal all wounds and to forgive everything that's ever happened so that we can reconcile with the pieces that need to be mended back together within our own hearts and within this world. And we are worthy of our own love and our own time and attention to it. Thank you so much. For unifying with Mother Mary and her mission to bring so many children home to safe families and safe homes, safe houses that are not on fire in this world. Let us remember that everything on fire from these agendas is announcing to our awareness the imbalances of dark and light in this world. And it's also announcing the arrival of the Christ within us that is here to work together as one body, to continue to pray, to visualize, to uplift our family of light in every state and in every country across this world. With enough prayer and meditation, when you start to roll up your sleeves and really, really get involved uh, on this level with your own inner work consecrated to the liberation of all souls, what you discover is that this is an interstellar mission this goes so far beyond humanity and just this planet. You think this is our first rodeo watching the planet burn down? Let's try to get it right this time. I know with Mother Mary's help, and I know with the Sophia Dragon Tribe, I know with us activating our divine genome, all things are possible through the Christ consciousness that exists within each and every one of us. All my love to you. Happy Mother Mary Day. It's just Mother Mary Day every day here for me in my heart. I love you all so much. Have a blessed, blessed week.